Can a person who reads the Book of Mormon 43 times actually leave the LDS Church? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. And today we have Kenneth Davies, all the way from... Spring City, Utah. I love that city. It's a very quaint and pretty setting down there. A lot of artists. And yeah. Yeah, it's a neat area. Were you born there? Born no, in that area? no, I was born in Provo. Oh, you were? Hospital, raised in Mapleton. Okay. And lived your whole life there in yeah. Utah County, kind of? Yeah, or, pretty yeah. much until, until about 24 years ago. <laughs> okay. And were you born in the church? Were, were, yeah. Were you? Yeah, your pioneer, were... Mormon pioneer ancestors. Oh, anybody we would know? Uh, I'm a descendant of uh, Susanna Young, who was Brigham Young's older sister. Oh my, she joined the church, I guess, somewhere yeah. along the way. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and her son was my great grandpa, and he was the f brought here by his uncle to wow. landscape their public buildings. He was Utah's <laughs> first landscape architect. Wow. Interesting. So, uh, growing up in the church, I guess you were primary and yeah. deacon, teacher, priest, and all that stuff. Yeah, just huh? everything. Yeah. Uh, just how many brothers and sisters? How many, what kind of a I have, family? I have seven brothers and three sisters. Oh. And I'm the second oldest. Oh, yeah. Well, that's neat. And you ended up, uh, I guess, going to school down in Mapleton, was it? Well, uh, Springville. Springville. Well, Mapleton Elementary, and then we went to Springville, Springville for high junior school. high and high school. Oh, okay. And uh, you end up going on a mission. Yeah. Tell J us where you went. Japan, Fukuoka. <laughs> How was that? It was hard, but it was it was a good experience. Yeah. Tough yeah. learning that language, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah, and yeah. memorizing the discussions in Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, now, I've heard that it's it, it's interesting, you learn kind of the phraseologies, but you really don't get a sense of reading it. Is that true, or is that, well, did it's, you it's, try to read it, too? Well, it's too hard of a language to try and learn to read. We just learn to speak it. Well, that's kind of what I've right. heard. Because, yeah, yeah. it would take years to learn all the Chinese characters and all yeah. that. Well, that's interesting. And did you, uh, and also the other I, concept is that you're going to a nation that really isn't uh, Christian based, I guess. Was that? Yeah, they were. What was your experience? They were pretty with that? resistant. Uh, ours was the lowest in baptisms for the world, the <laughs> lowest mission in baptism for the world. Oh, dear. <laughs> and then my, my ex wife went on a mission and. Uh, her mission was the highest in baptisms in the world when she was there. So you balanced each other out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine it's difficult. So what religion is there in, in Japan? Is oh, it Buddhism, Shintoism. Shinto, yeah. But they're pretty resistant. To... So were you knocking on doors? or? Yeah, mostly. Mostly yeah. knocking on I doors. I wonder if they we do it differently do now with the Internet and so on. Have you heard or do you know, or I don't they, know. what they do now? Oh. I hear they have a temple there now. Yeah, I guess. In Fukuoka. Fukuoka. Yeah. So did you, um, any questions about the church ever come up in your mind during the, your mission? Or you've been through the temple, of course, to go on a mission? And Yeah, I'd had questions? questions. I had questions for years. What uh, kind? Anything just, specific? Well, just reading the Book of Mormon, it just didn't read like a true history. It read more like a work of fiction. <laughs> Well, I was thinking when you said, t told me that you'd read it 43 times, that it, you started seeing things in it that... Yeah, that just didn't ring true. Now, see, that would be interesting for the church to tell people to read the Book of Mormon, but don't read it very fast, don't get through it too often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> because they tell you start them seeing, like seeing it as a work, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought it was funny about the gold plates and that, that you know, here are all these, and it came to passes, and all these long words and sentences that are in there, and they're right. etching these on a on a gold on gold plates. Yeah, I guess Mormon did that. I don't know. They, yeah, <laughs> or supposedly, but um, so that was one of your anything else, anything with the temple or 
Well, the temple seemed issues. a little weird when I first went. Yeah. But I and, really enjoyed going, you know, yeah. after that. Uh, yeah, it was this Manti real, Temple, I guess. And yeah. Well, let's see, I, I took out my endowments in Provo Temple, and then I was married in the Manti Temple. Oh, okay. So after you get home from your mission, you end up marrying? Well, it like. took me a few years. I think I was 33 <laughs> before I got married. But <laughs> it took you a while to settle down, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Were you active during this time? Yeah, I was active all the okay. time. And uh, going to the temple, I guess. And just Where did you meet your wife? Uh, BYU uh, singles dance. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And uh, from there, it was just love at first sight or anything yeah. or what? Didn't take you know, 33 years or a few years to get uh, serious with her, or did it? No, it was love at first sight. Was we it? <laughs> hit it off pretty much and got married about a year after we met, I think. Okay. And she's good, obviously, LDS and everything, and was. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, what happens kind of in life? Well, let's see. I was married for about seven years, just working different jobs and yeah. we had four children and okay and then my uh, parents joined the uh, this polygamy group in Manti when I was okay. about 39 and really or 40 they and joined the uh, uh, polygamy group. My dad did it first. Yeah and did that uh, affect the family much? Well we were all wondering what was going on why he would do that. And, uh, <laughs> And did any of the been, other, did it, Did you or any of the kids join with your dad? Well, dad told me to come down and be rebaptized because, you know, that was what Brigham Young had had people do. And really? So I thought, well, okay, I'll, uh, I'll do that. Get your sins washed away? Or Get my sins washed away <clears> again. Become a member of a polygamy group, I guess. Huh? I really wasn't wanting to join the polygamy group. But yeah. I mean, I was curious, I was interested in why they were, why Dad and Mom had joined, but I didn't really want to be it, <laughs> part of it. Well, for anyone that's interested, uh, you actually interviewed with Doris Hansen, who does the show Polygamy, What Love Is This? And this was about 10 years ago, About 10 years ago. So do you remember the episode or the date or anything? It was specific? January 10th, I think, 2009. January of 2009. So look that up, and I bet mm -hmm. you told an interesting yeah. story there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you, did you really participate in the polygamy group? Was your wife, uh, oh, she wasn't happy about it. Is that right? Well, I didn't tell her right off that I'd been baptized because I really wasn't, you know, intending to join the group. But right. But I unwisely talked at work about uh, being rebaptized, and oh. the lady at work called my bishop, and uh, things kind of went from there. Oh. Before I know it, I was uh, excommunicated, and uh, my wife threw me out. And, oh my goodness! And so there, I went there down went the and, temple marriage, huh? <laughs> <laughs> went down and lived with my parents. Uh, uh, for how long were you there? Well, I uh, was living with my parents basically uh, until they died. But uh, oh, yeah. but I went to the uh, polygamy group for about a year. Did you, did you ever marry in the polygamy group? No, no. Oh, you just, didn't. Just so you really weren't involved. intending to be a polygamist, but just... Uh, just attending church with my parents, basically. Yeah, is that honoring your father and mother, maybe? I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but they end, end up passing away, and then... So what happens after that? Well, uh, after Dad passed away, we... Uh, the neighbor up... The, Dad had bought some property in Spring City. Yeah. And the neighbor up there offered to build us a house, and we could just mortgage our home in Chester. And now you say we. Who was that with? Is that with your? Basically, me and the neighbor and other people. Uh, but I mean, you, with... were you married at this point? No. Or? Okay. No. I see. That that's the we. <laughs> no. Okay. So that was in Spring City, and that's where. Are you still there? Is that where? Yeah, you're yeah we're still in the house. Okay. We we built a house. After now you've since died. remarried. Yeah, I, uh, I married the, the uh, pageant director's daughter just about two and a half years ago. The Manti pageant director's daughter? <laughs> yeah, an assistant director. That yeah. She's been an assistant director for about over 50 years. Wow. And was, is she a member of the church? or is Yeah. She, okay. Or the, the pageant director is. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, 
my wife, uh, I guess, asked to have her name removed from the church. But oh, she she's did. still kind of got leanings towards either Catholicism or Mormonism. <laughs> One or the other, huh? Yeah, she goes to the Mormon church most of the time. So I thought she was a oh. Christian because she was attending me from Church of the Bible, but oh, okay. <laughs> but I married her, and then I found out well, maybe she's not as much of a Christian as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that can be challenging, can yeah. it? So after your year of uh, with the polygamy group, what happens after that, church-wise? Well, the uh, neighbor there in Chester, where we were living, uh, invited me to Sunday school at Ephraim Church of the Bible, so. Oh, I've been to I that church. And, it's a wonderful church. Yeah, it is a really nice church. Yeah. And did you go, obviously? Or well, yeah, I, I just kept going there. Did you notice was, any uh, differences between their worship and what you'd been experienced in the Mormon church? Yeah, a lot better. Was it better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot. Specifically, anything? Well, you're worshiping Jesus instead of talking about Joseph Smith all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That is different, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. The music is different and the, yeah. the words. Yeah. What did you think of Jesus as a Mormon? Uh, I mean, if you can think back of when you were in, on your mission or going through the temple, what was Jesus to well, you? Well, he was just crazy. I mean, we, we had to be grateful to Jesus because he died for our sins. But yeah. uh, we believe that as Mormons, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But he. It's kind of a whole different concept of who God is and who Jesus is. And yeah. You thought of him as your older brother, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, my we? older yeah. brother. My yeah. One of our, just one of the spirit children that... <laughs> the oldest spirit child of yeah, the oldest Heavenly spirit. Father. And Satan's brother. And Satan's older brother, yeah. and my so, older brother. <laughs> so different, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then like you say, the, was... the praise, the, the worship that we sing in Christian churches is yeah. so different. Yeah, it's just a whole different concept, a whole yeah. different thing. So how long have you been there at the Ephraim Church? Well, I uh, first started going there in 1996. Wow. Uh, it's kind of, uh, well, I went to a Presbyterian church for a while until they closed it down. Oh. But then I went back <laughs> to Ephraim Church of the Bible after that. I was going to ask you, all this uh, time or this year or so in the polygamy group, did you sense that you would go back to Mormonism? Did you give that a try? I mean, that's what you had known and grown up with. No, 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 not after, what after I learned in the polygamy group, I could never go back to mainstream church. Oh, really? Anything specific? Well, just you? that uh, polygamy is the true Mormonism. <laughs> if you really want to get down to it, that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if that isn't true, and it, it certainly isn't for it's salvation, not, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not true, so why would I ever go back? <laughs> yeah, so that kind of killed the, the, the mainstream church yeah. as well. Yeah. That is a whole different concept, isn't it? I know, we know that Mormons, uh, I don't know, love Jesus, or they know who he is, and they pray to him, and well, but there's just a subtle difference, isn't there? Yeah. Well, they're told not Maybe to pray. Maybe not to, so subtle. They're but, told not to pray to Jesus. It's always Heavenly Father. That's right. Yeah. That's so uh, kind of a whole different... <laughs> although I think there are some Mormons that seem to have more of a relationship with Jesus. I don't know. Yeah. I think I kind of did. Did you? Yeah, I think I did. Even on your mission and, and so on? Felt yeah. like that? See, I didn't. I, I have to admit, I... Uh, I was preaching Mormonism out on my mission. Well, that's what you, you know, preach. Yeah, I was Joseph a Mormon Smith missionary. And the first Mormonism. vision and the Book of Mormon. And yeah, the only guy I baptized, baptized we basically uh, converted him using the idea of the pre-existence. Oh, you like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, used, I thought that was wonderful, this idea of the pre-existence. And I found out, well, that wasn't... Uh, God was the only one that pre-existed, not yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, who knew? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know before. Oh, shoot. So, uh, what's happened then? In, you've been going to the church there, and I understand you taught Sunday school for a little while. Well, yeah, it was about a year I taught a children's Sunday school class. Yeah. And that was a, through the, with the Bible? And, At the Ephraim Church of the Bible, yeah. yeah. What did you think of the Bible as a Mormon? 
Well, when I first read it uh, when I was about 14, I thought, well, uh, you know, what they're saying about the Bible isn't true. This, you know, they, they make the Bible out to be, you know, not true or something. And You really sensed that at age 14, that, that it was yeah, uh, something you could trust? That the Bible was trust? true. Yeah, the Bible is something I could trust. Even though you'd memorized the eighth article of faith? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew there was something wrong, you know. For You're kind of a rebel years. in that way, aren't you? <laughs> Well, I, I tried to appear to be a good Mormon all those years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I say 43 times in the Book of Mormon. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. And it does, you know, they talk about Jesus in there. And, yeah. But there's not much Mormonism in the, Bi in the Book of Mormon, is there? Did you eventually notice that? Yeah, the, there's no polygamy. There's no... Uh, Men can become gods. In fact, it's gods. against polygamy. And yeah, it's against polygamy. Yeah, men can become gods, or that God was once a man. That's not in there. Yeah. And the three degrees of glory. Yeah, none yeah. of that. And families are forever. And yeah, it reads like a Christian book, basically. Yeah, with a couple of couple of changes, they c it could. Yeah. And I think that's the hook. Don't you think that's yeah. what attracts unsuspecting Christians who convert to Mormonism? That they're yeah. reading the Book of Mormon, sensing that there's something yeah. in there about Jesus, so it must be. Yeah. And well, it's I, in the King James language. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that Jesus talked that way, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that becomes a little suspect, but I didn't really realize it at the time. Yeah, that uh, and here's this Book of Mormon that reads like the, like a Bible or. Yeah. King, well, it's King James got English. Large portions of the Bible plagiarized in there. <laughs> yeah. Or paraphrased. I've or, asked this question before, but to, to people, but do you feel like you know more about Mormonism now than you did as a Mormon? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> a lot more. Isn't that funny how that works? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we just have our eyes opened and uh, we just have a sense of, you know, Jesus and. We talk about grace and works. Did you ever have that concept at all as a Mormon? Well, grace, you know, reading the the book, The Miracle of Forgiveness by Spencer W. Kimball, yeah. there's not much grace in there. No. <laughs> a lot of work, though. <laughs> a lot of works. <laughs> and that's really what the temple and everything mm -hmm. else is all about, isn't it? What we're doing and yeah. what we accomplish. What we and, do and, and you have to be worthy to go into the temple, of course, yeah. and can't be a sinner. And now we know we're all sinners, right? Right. Did you know that as a Mormon? Yeah, I think I realized that. Did you? <laughs> well, I guess I, yeah. I knew I wasn't perfect. You know, that's what we always say. I wasn't perfect, but mm -hmm. to really think that I was a sinner and needed a, needed a, a real Savior. Well... I think it was the realization that I was a sinner that got me really reading the Book of Mormon and looking and really searching for something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm proud of you, it. and especially so young, it sounds like that you had did some thinking about the Bible and yeah. didn't have. I didn't know much about Paul. I don't know that we just don't really spend much time. Well, it's, as a Mormon, talking about Paul and his teachings. And it's hard to really get a real grasp of the Bible as a Mormon. Cause and why they, do you think that is? Well, they really discourage. We don't trust it, do we, as no, a Mormon? We Mormons don't, don't really trust the Bible. I keep saying we, but I mean Mormons don't trust it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I carried that thing <laughs> for years. I only read it <laughs> once or twice. Uh, yeah, I think I'd read it probably about ten times before I finally came out. Had you really? Yeah. The New Testament, even? Well, the, yeah, the whole Bible. Really? Yeah, I only got through the Old Testament, I think, twice. Maybe a couple more in the <laughs> New Testament. But it was... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. anything that didn't ever gel, we just, we just dismissed it because it wasn't translated correctly, right? Yeah, that's kind you of the... You never question. That's the question. That's what they do, teach you to do is question the Bible. Yeah. So, uh, I guess uh, coming to a point where do you have anything that you'd say to your family or friends or anyone that you... Oh. You still probably have a lot of family in Mormonism, don't you? Yeah, yeah most of them are. Yeah. They're what do you think still... they most misunderstand about Christianity? Well, the Bible is true. <laughs> <laughs> and can be trusted. It can be trusted. That's yeah. big, isn't it? Yeah, read the New Testament. Yeah. 
Another thing is I always think is that they think it's a kind of an eat, drink, and be merry now because Jesus is taking care of all that and we don't do good works or anything like that. And Well, I think we do good works because we're saved, not to be saved. Not to be saved. Yeah, because Jesus did that for us, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we appreciate that concept so much, and mm -hmm. my wife and I, that we realize that we can't work our way to heaven, that, that Jesus did it. And, and you go to a Bible study still, don't you? You were there last night, it sounded like. Yeah, you, know, you go to a Bible study led by a man that served 25 years in prison. Yeah, we've interviewed Adam Swap, and <laughs> what a wonderful story yeah. he's got. And yeah, he's... Yeah, there's not very many Bible studies that have the privilege of being led by a man that served 25 years in prison. Yeah, but God touched his heart, and yeah. like he does so many, and just... Yeah. And it's undeniable when it happens. When do you feel yeah. like you had a born-again moment? Uh, well, I, I said the sinner's prayer after about after attending the Ephraim Church of the Bible for about a year. On the, what prompted that? Well, the, on this, the, uh, I just went to the, the pastor's parents' place. I was good friends with them. And uh, yeah. I was just asked, asking them, well, what do I need to do to be saved? And so they led me through the sinner's prayer. Well, did you feel like you weren't I, saved? I mean, what made you think that I, you... Well, I don't know. You are just listening and realized... I thought maybe I should... Uh, Make it official, kind of thing. <laughs> I kind of felt saved, you know, before, but yeah, that you had that. But I did have a real special experience when I said that prayer. Did you? I felt like Jesus was coming and giving me a big hug and just being with me, you know. Isn't that wonderful. Yeah. There's a certain freedom in that, isn't there? Do you did you sense that? Yeah. 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 Like. Yeah, like, I would gosh, never. I would Jesus. never go back to the Mormonism. <laughs> no, that Jesus has done it all, and yeah. he's done for me what I couldn't do for myself. And then, yeah. like you said, we work after that to to show him our love and to, yeah. the love we have for others. And it's a wonderful thing, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> a lot different than that works-based mm -hmm. religion where you're trying to earn your way to, to yeah. heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kenneth, I, any last thoughts or anything you want to share? <laughs> well, it's it's just great to be a Christian. Yeah. And not have all of all those works hanging over my head all anymore. <laughs> yeah. Has it been rough with your your wife? Is she still active? Did you say? And she's been going to the, attending the Mormon church. Has she? It's understandable, you know, yeah. being raised by the pageant director. And you're just showing good Christ-like love, I hope, and be Trying patient to. with her. <laughs> yeah. And is she, uh, does she ever question, or does, does she like to talk about anything? I or? think she's had some questions in the past, but she's kind of going back to, oh. she's kind of <laughs> going back to Mormonism now. Yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping we can get her to... <laughs> Read and think a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Had she, had she ever heard of the the gospel essays or the gospel topic essays? I don't know. I need to talk to her about that. Yeah, they're at LDS dot org, and they cover things yeah. that people used to be excommunicated over, you know, when they said <laughs> stuff about things and yeah. polygamy and stuff. Yeah. So. Well, she's not currently a member of the LDS Church, but she's oh. kind of thinking of going back. I think. I uh, see. Or either that or joining the Catholic Church. I'm not sure oh which one. <laughs> I actually well, went both... last Sunday with her to the Catholic Church. Just the first time I've ever been to a Catholic Church. Well, so that was interesting. Kind of a ritualistic too, isn't it? Yeah, I've is. never been. But yeah. She wanted to go. So well, we we'll, we'll pray for your dear wife. and Appreciate that. Yeah. She needs all the prayers she can get. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. that, yeah. you know, she can do a little reading and... Yeah. God will soften her heart, and maybe um, she'll come to see who who Jesus really is. And yeah. hey, well, thanks for coming. I appreciate it, and uh, appreciate it. <laughs> okay, see you next time on the Ex Mormon Files. <laughs>